This is a story that comes, I am told, from the Inuit people, far in the north of Canada and other places in the Arctic Circle. And it's from the dawn of time, although perhaps dawn isn't quite the right word for at this time, the Inuit spent their entire lives in darkness. They saw perhaps just little glimmers of starlight above them, just enough to give some kind of definition to their world. But really they spent their days, the word day was meaningless, but they spent their time in darkness. And then Crow came in, bringing with him amazing stories of a land far to the south where they had light and colour and warmth, or at least more warmth than they had here in their icy darkness. And some of the more sceptical people amongst them said, this is preposterous. It is dark. It has always been dark. It will always be dark. But others, it caught their imagination, particularly the younger generations, who thought, wow, this would be amazing. Think what we could do or how much easier we could do everything if we could just see more. How easier it would be to hunt, how much easier it would be to play and find each other and avoid the polar bears. And so excited they were by this possibility that they began to plead with Crow, saying, please, please go and bring us some daylight, bring it back to us so that we can oh, just have that amazing thing in our lives. But Crow refused and refused. He said, no, I am too old. It is too far. But they pleaded and pleaded and pleaded and eventually he relented. And after making sure he'd eaten lots of food and fed himself up, he set off on the long, long, long journey south. And he flew for so long in darkness that he started to doubt himself. He thought, oh, maybe I am too old. Maybe I dreamed it. Just as he was thinking of giving up and doubting himself completely, he saw on the horizon, well, a horizon, this little thin silvery line of light stretching across the sky as far as he could see. And he knew that he hadn't dreamed it. It was real. And he was nearly there. It spurred him forward. He beat his wings faster and harder and Suddenly he burst out into this world of light and colour. The sky shone with an amazing blue light. Little wispy clouds glowed in the sunshine. And far down below him he could see ice and snow and drifts sparkling and glittering in the sunlight. And a small gathering of huts and a river that wounded, its and wend, wounded and wended its way between them, and a bunch of trees. And he flew down, swooping round, lapping up the light until he landed in the trees. And once settled, ah, resting at last, he just bathed in that glorious light. And after a while, out of the nearest hut, the chief's hut, emerged a young woman, the chief's daughter no less, carrying with her a bucket, and she took it to the river, she plunged it carefully in, pulled it out, and began to walk back to the hut. And Crow, seeing his opportunity, transformed into a tiny speck of dust, and he drifted down and landed in the folds of the young woman's cloak. And so he was carried into the chief's hut. Once in there, he had a good look around and he saw over at the edge a, a wooden box, just a simple, unassuming little wooden box, but quite strong and securely fastened. But where the lid closed, 
there was a line of silver, gold, blue, all kinds of colours of light just trying to spill out. And he knew that that, that was where the light was kept. And still as a speck of dust, he drifted out and he landed in the ear of the woman's little boy. And he scratched the inside of the ear and the little boy began to cry. And the chief, his grandfather, rushed over to him saying, what's, what's wrong, my boy? What's wrong? And Crow cunningly whispered into the boy's ear, I want to play with the ball of light. And the boy repeated his words. Denying his grandson nothing, the chief bade his daughter open the trunk carefully, take out a ball of light and bring it to him. And the chief tied it tightly with string and gave it to his grandson who marvelled at it. He loved playing with this thing, the colours that sparkled and swirled across its surfaces. He bounced it off the floor, sending little bright sparks flying. Filled his face with joy. Until, of course, Crow scratched his ear again and the boy began to cry once more. I want to play with the ball outside, whispered Crow into the boy's ear. And again the boy repeated his words. And quick as a flash, the chief, the grandfather, whisked the boy up, took him outside, ball and all, into the little cleared area of snow just outside the hut. And the boy began playing with it again, swirling it around in the air, marvelling at the colours, the shapes that swirled across this beautiful thing. But Crow drifted again out of the boy's ear, transformed back into a crow and with his claws he grabbed hold of the string and he flew off fast and high into the sky before they could catch him dragging the ball of light behind him. He flew and he flew and he flew until he came again into the dark lands but this time with the ball of light being towed behind him he cast a little shadow ever Everywhere he went, everywhere, everywhere he went. And finally the Inuit people way far north, they saw a tiny, tiny, tiny little speck of light in the distance. And it got bigger and bigger and bigger until finally they could see crows beating wings silhouetted against this glowing ball of brilliance. And they were puzzling, thinking, this is an amazing thing, but it's so small. How, how will this light everything we need it to light? But just as he came above them, Crow let go. And the ball fell, seeming in slow motion until... <laughs> it hit the ground and exploded into light. Suddenly, everything was gleaming and sparkling. Sparkling, everything took on form and colour. They could see the glaciers glittering in the sunshine and the snow sparkling and silvery. They could see each other far more clearly than they had ever seen each other. They thanked Crow profusely, just their hearts filled with joy at this amazing light that he had brought them. But he cautioned that the ball would burn brightly for six months and at the end of that six months it would need to rest for a further six months and so on. But still they were so happy they thought well we've lived our entire lives in darkness until now. If we only have half the, li half the year in darkness it will be so much easier to bear knowing that the light is to come. And so it is, to this day they live half the year in darkness, half the year in light, and they remain forever thankful to Crow. It's a little strange telling stories to camera. I don't entirely like it, maybe I'll get more used to it. But I miss telling stories, I miss sharing stories, I miss hearing other people's stories. Um, 
so until we're able to do that in person again, frankly, this is going to have to do, and I think I'm going to have to get used to it because I need to tell some stories again. I'm fed up of not doing it.